Hey guys, what's up? It's JR Cuber, and in this video I'll be showing you how to solve the 3x3x4 and 3x3x5 cuboids. So first things first, if you have not seen my 3x3x2 tutorial, please go and watch that now because I will be basing most of what I say in this tutorial off of that one, so the link will be in the description, go watch that video. So, welcome to the tutorial for the 3x3x4 and 3x3x5. Once you learn these cuboids, you will be well on your way to solving much more complex cuboids. This is going to be very similar to the 3x3x2 tutorial since it's almost the same process. We're just going to be solving two 3x3x2s instead of one for the 3x3x4. And for the 3x3x5, we're just adding on some shape shifting and a middle layer. So starting with the 3x3x4, we're going to solve this inner 3x3x2 here, and then we're going to work outward to this outer 3x3x2 here. This same method is applied to all 3x3xn cuboids, and this will be the foundation which we will then be adding to for the 3x3x5. And once you've learned these two, you will pretty much be able to solve any 3x3xn cuboid just from working outwards. So in theory, you could solve a 3x3x1000. The same method applies. It's sort of similar to reduction for big cubes if you think about it, because if you can solve reduction on a 5x5 or higher, you could, in theory, solve a 1000 by 1000 So let's get started with the actual tutorial. I won't be covering notation since everyone should know that by now, and I covered it in my 3x3x2 tutorial. So I sort of said how we're going to be solving 3x3x4, but let's go into a little bit more detail. So the first step will be to solve the cross of the inner 3x3x2, as you can see here. Then we will put in the first layer corners, then the second layer corners, then the second layer edges, which will solve this inner 3x3x2. Now we can move outward. We'll start by solving the outer layer cross edges, then the first layer corners, then the second layer corners, and then the second layer edges. Now some of the time just doing that will solve the cube, but other times we will get something new that we didn't cover in the 3x3x2 tutorial, which is parity. And basically parity on cuboids is very similar to PLL parity on even layer cubes if you're familiar with that. But don't worry, there's only one algorithm and it's the only parity algorithm you'll need to learn for cuboid solving. And this one honestly will probably be used more than the regular cuboid algorithms. It's a really helpful algorithm for moving pieces around and it's going to be used a lot in bigger cuboids. So with that, let's scramble up the cube and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we want to make sure to do before we even start is make sure the white center is on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to solve what is sort of our bottom layer of our first 3x3x2, three three which is this layer here, starting with our cross edges. And since these cross edges are actually centers, they don't have a second color on them, so we can really use either one. So in this case, we have this green piece here, and we need a blue piece to go across from it. So we can either use this blue piece here or this blue piece here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use this one. So we'll turn it up out of place, rotate it to the back, and turn it down. Now doing that, also put in our red piece here so we can just go ahead and put in our orange piece right there. So now that we're done with our cross edges, we're on to first layer corners, which is just a little bit more confusing because we can't easily tell which corner pieces are white and yellow like we can on the 3x3x2. Three three so we're going to base it purely off of whether or not the corner piece has flipped colors from the spot it needs to go. So for example, I can see this green-red corner here. So let's see if this is the right one. We're going to go ahead and turn the bottom layer to put it above the spot where it would go. And we can see that this is not the correct piece because the colors match and we want them to be flipped. So the actual piece that's going to need to go here is going to be this one here. Uh, this is the other green and red piece. So the first thing we're going to need to do to get it there is to get it out of its current place. And to do that, we're just going to go ahead and use the corner insertion alg, which would bring this piece down here, but and kick this one out. So that's just R2, U, R2, U prime, R2. That brings that out right here. And we can turn it over the spot it needs to go. And now, as you can see, the colors are flipped. And that's exactly what we want. So when we do R2, U, R2, U prime, R2, that will put it into place. All right, moving on. We'll go ahead and do this corner next. Let's see if this is the correct one. And yes, it is, because the colors are opposite. So we can go ahead and put it in just like that. This is the next one. That is the correct one, so we will put it in. And now this one, which is the last one. And so this one is also correct. So we will put that one in. 
So now that our first layer is done, we can go ahead and move on to the second layer, and we will start by putting in the corners. As you can see, we have headlights here, which means these two pieces need to switch, and we can do that using the corner swap algorithm, making sure headlights are on the left. We can go ahead and do the algorithm R2 U, R2 U prime, R2, Y prime, R2 U prime, R2 U, R2. And there we go. Okay, now moving on to edges. Here we have two adjacent edge swaps, one here and one in the back. So we'll start with this one. Go ahead and do R2, U, R2, U, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U, R2, U prime, R2. Now we will go ahead and do these two exactly the same way. And there we go. That solves our inner three by three by two. So now that the inner layers are solved, we can go ahead and move outward to this outer three by three by two. But there are a couple of things that are a little bit different. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the cross edges and we don't wanna break up these middle layers. So as you can see, if I was to take this cross edge and turn it over and bring it down, it would mess it up. So what you wanna do is take this spot, bring it up first and then rotate this piece into it and then turn it back down. And as you can see, that doesn't do anything to the middle layers, which is exactly what we want. Now we can go ahead and do that for the rest of the pieces. So we'll go ahead and put this one in, take this empty spot, bring it up, turn this piece into it, bring it back down, do the same here, piece up, turn it in, and bring it back down. Okay, so now that we have the cross edges done, we can start putting in the corners. So we'll, for this one, we'll bring it over the spot it needs to go, and uh, okay, so it looks like, oh yeah, I got my color scheme wrong. Okay, so, um, this does happen occasionally and there's a really easy way to fix it. So all you have to do if you do end up getting your color scheme wrong, uh, just do a small U2, so cut through the middle and then uh, do an M2 and then restore and then just put in the two cross edges that got taken out. So that one in there and then this one down here like that. And then um, let's see, now we can check it. Uh, yes, so now that looks right. So let's go ahead and continue. Uh, this piece can be brought down here just by doing the R2 U, R2 U prime R2 algorithm to put it in. But as you can see, that screws up uh, our middle layers here. Um, so what we wanna do is make sure not to actually rotate the cube like this as we're putting in these pieces. Um, this one's already in, so we can go ahead and then rotate the bottom layer instead of the entire cube to open up another free spot, which is here. Uh, the piece that needs to go there is actually here. So we'll go ahead and take this piece out, replacing it with the actually correct one. So this piece can be brought out just like that, solving this one. Then we'll bring this free spot back and put this one in. Now, as you can see, we did end up actually having uh, these pieces not be solved, but that's all right. That means that we will most likely be having parity at the end and we'll just deal with it then. So moving on to the top layer, it looks like all of our corners are already solved, which is really nice. So we'll just go ahead and solve the edges. Uh, what we can do is do an opposite edge swap to put this piece back there, just like that. And now we just have an adjacent edge swap. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we do have parity. So when you have parity, here's how you deal with it. Now you may be able to tell how similar this is to the four by four parity algorithm. And the algorithm that we're gonna to use to solve it is actually sort of similar, uh, but the way we're gonna hold it is so that the pieces that need to be switched are right here. So they're going to sort of switch like that, right? So then we will perform this algorithm. Small U2, so through the middle, R2, F2, small U2, regular U2, F2, R2, small U2. And there we go, that's how you do it. Now that parity algorithm is one of the most essential cuboid algorithms you will learn. And as you get into bigger cuboids, especially like the bricks, like the three by four by five and four by five by six, you will be using this algorithm a lot. So that's all for the three by three by four. Let's go ahead and move on to the three by three by five. Okay, so how do we go about solving this cube now? So starting from a scrambled state, we're gonna wanna first start by returning the cube to its correct shape. And the only pieces that actually need solving in this stage is the middle layer. Then we will solve the first three by three by two, which is going to be these layers here. And we're gonna to have to pay more attention to how we're placing the pieces as to not mess up the middle layer. 
Then we'll solve the outer 3x3x2, three by three by which will solve the cube, or if we have parity, then we'll deal with that. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is return the cube to its proper state. And now, like I said, we're only gonna be worrying about solving the middle layer in this stage. So the rest of the pieces don't matter, which means we can really use any of the pieces to build the cross. So we're gonna go ahead and take this piece and put it in. Um, to So we have three pieces already. And then we will go ahead and put this piece in, um, just like that. Okay, so now that the cross is done, we can go ahead and move on to first two layers. Now I use CFOP and I'll be using F2L, but if it's easier for you to use beginner's method or something like that, go right ahead. So as you can see, this piece is already solved, but this corner needs to be rotated down. So pretty much just using like basic F2L techniques, we can take it out and then break the pair up. And then as you can see, here are the two pieces and we can go ahead and solve that. Oh, there it goes my center. Okay, so um, so that solves that. Now we can move on. Uh, here's the next one that we can put in here. And all right, so if we, as you can see, if we were to put it in just like this, the edge would be flipped. But the beauty of not having to worry about any of the other pieces is we can just take any of these pieces that's standing upright, put it over top, and now we can take this pair and put that pair in properly, just like that, and solve that piece. Now this one will be next, and we can just go ahead and uh, put this in using this pair, just like that, which will bring out this piece, which we can also put in, and uh, just like that. Now we can go ahead and do OLL. Um, there we go. Just gonna be using two look OLL. And since PLL doesn't matter, um, there we go, we've returned the cube to its former state. Now it's very important this stage to make sure the middle layer is solved. If it's not, this is where you need to correct it before we can move on. Now we'll just start by solving the first 3x3x2 three by three by with these layers here. And what's nice is that we actually do have a center now, so we know exactly where the pieces need to go, so we're not going to be getting confused with any sort of color scheme errors. So we're gonna be solving this as well, just like we would the outer layers of the three by three by four, because we have this middle layer here. So for example, to get this blue piece in back here, uh, we're gonna to need to rotate the spot up and then turn it in and then turn it back down. So we'll go ahead and do the same for this red piece to move it down here, turn the spot up, rotate in, restore, and then do the same for um, orange. And there we go. There we have our cross. Now we can go ahead and put in the corner pieces. So this one here, let's see if this is the correct one. It is not. This one is the correct one though. So this one can be moved down here. I'm just using the insertion algorithm, but of course that messed up our middle layer. So we're not gonna wanna rotate the cue. We're just gonna wanna rotate the bottom layer itself. Um, so the piece that needs to go here is here. Uh, let's go ahead and see if the green and orange piece can actually is in the top layer that we can put it down. Yes, here it is. So this piece can be brought down, bringing this piece out that's going to go there. So this piece, if we put that in there, then the piece that needs to go here is brought out and we can put it in. And then the last one is back here. And this just so happens to be the piece that goes there. And there we go. Uh, there is our bottom layer, easy as that. So let's go ahead and do the top. The first thing we're gonna look for are headlights, which we have right here. And now we need to do a corner swap uh, to switch these two, but there's something a little bit different about the way we're gonna do that because we can't use rotations. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the R2U, R2U prime, R2 that we normally do, but instead of doing a Y prime, we're gonna go ahead and do a U prime D, just like that. And then we can do R2, U prime, R2, U, R2. And then we can fix the bottom layer if you want to. And there we go, that fixes all the corners. So now we have two adjacent edge swaps, run here and one in the back. So we'll go ahead and do that normally. R2, U, R2, U, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2, U, R2, U prime, R2, yep. So um, now of course we can't rotate because screwed up our middle layer here. So we'll do a U2, and then do the same algorithm. And there we go. So as you can see, we don't have any parity, uh, but if you would, you would just ignore it until we get to the final stage um, in the solve. So we're gonna go ahead and solve the outer three by three by two now, uh, just the same way that we did before. 
So we'll start with our cross. This piece will just come over here and then we can put in, say orange for example, bring the spot up, turn the piece in, bring it back down. Same for red. And then the same for green here. Now we can go ahead and put in our corners, starting with this one. So we'll put that down here. And then we will go ahead and put in, let's see, this one down here. That brings out another one that we need that will go here, which also brings out the last one that we're gonna need back here. And there we go. So now moving on to the top, we have headlights here, and we're gonna need to switch these two pieces. We're gonna use the same algorithm, R2, U, R2, U prime, R2, and then we're going to do U prime, D, R2, U prime, R2, U, R2, and then D prime to fix that. And okay, so it looks like we have the same case that we had before, two adjacent edge swaps right there. So we'll go ahead and do the first one. And then finally the second one. And there we go, the cube is solved. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what to do if you do have parity. So let's say you get done with the first three by three by two stage and you get something that looks a little bit like this or this. So if you see this, just do what I said, solve the rest of the cube normally, and there we go. This is what it's gonna look like if you have parity at the end. And so we're just gonna solve this exactly the same way we did for the three by three by four. The middle layer is just sort of jutted in the middle here, but it does absolutely nothing. So we're just gonna go ahead and do small u2, r2, f2, small u2, and then regular u2, f2, r2, u2. And there we go, the cube is solved. So there we go, that's how you solve the 3x3x4 and 3x3x5 cuboids. If you found this tutorial helpful, let me know in the comments, and if you're still having trouble, make sure to go back and rewatch through the part that you don't understand. If you still don't get it, I'm sure there will be someone in the comments who will be willing to help you out. So that's about it for my tutorial of the 3x3x4 and 3x3x5. If you like this video, give it a like, and if you haven't already done so, like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, bye.